Hi guys, thanks for coming by to see it my way. And if you aren't here to be triggered, why are you here? Just kidding, stay here. I'm lonely. What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordy C. Today we are doing something a little bit different and we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of BL. I know, I know. Some toes might be stepped on, some wigs might be snatched, some edge glue might be unglued, but we're just here to have a nice little conversation. I want you guys to be very vocal in the comments because here on the Jordy C channel, we, we talk about things that, you know, could possibly upset Stan Twitter. But do we care? No. But we're gonna talk about Stan Twitter in this video too. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification before we get into this video. Also, don't forget to hit that like button as well. And guys, let's talk about some pros and cons. Let's get into it. Let's get canceled. Just kidding. Cancel culture is trash. All right, so when you think, when you think of pros and cons of the boys love genre, what do you think of? I'll give you a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Me too, me too, me too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Girl, okay, we on the same page. All right, all right, all right, so I don't feel bad. Um, Some of these may trigger some of you. Some of it may not, but it's my opinion, my opinion only. Okay, we respect opinions. We're not gonna be disrespectful here, but we're gonna respect opinions but yeah this is just going to be a lovely little conversation a little conversation between friends between family between me and my sea bears and whoever is new here if you're new hit that subscribe button as well hey how you doing welcome to the family all about love and positivity here and reality checks i've been doing a lot of those lately i guess because stan twitter has just been getting kind of but yeah stan twitter has been getting crazy but Without further ado guys, let's get into the actual video because I know y'all are tired of me just rambling off. I tend to do that here. It's hot. Oh my God, I'm about to burn up in front of these lights. Do y'all see me beating? Do y'all see the sweat beating up on my forehead? Oh my God. Anyway, let's talk about the good first, okay? There's a lot of good with BL, but we're just gonna hit on a couple of topics because I don't want this video to be too long. And at the end of this video, if you would like a part two let me know in the comment section below and hit that thumbs up button share it let everybody know like if y'all want a part two of me outlining the good and bad of bl let me know so let's start with bl bringing the community together before i got into bl and stuff like that i mean i was more of a k-pop head as far as like getting into like asian media i was more of a k-pop head before i even like knew about BL, but it wasn't long after I discovered K-pop that I discovered BL. Now, I started off with Club Friday 8. If you're talking about the worst BLs to start off with, the Club Friday series is the worst. I am so sorry, GMMTV, but Club Friday is the worst BL to start off a young gay man who's trying to figure himself out who's trying to spread his wings, fly like a bird, wants to fly away into the world of gay. You know, it was okay. I mean, if you don't know about the Club Friday series, there's a lot of them. They do not connect whatsoever. But the thing about Club Friday is that a lot of them end badly. All of them end badly. So, I mean, if you're looking for like a little change in pace, none of that goody two shoes, none of that happy ending stuff, Club Friday, there's like a lot of them. I think they're on 12 now. There's a lot. The BL community has brought a lot of us together. I've never found so many people that I relate to on the internet until I actually started like tweeting and you know, following people in the BL community on Instagram and Twitter. Because I got into BL around 2010, 2011, and I didn't start actually being and interacting with people on BL Twitter or BL Insta until like a couple years ago. You know how like Twitter has this little like niches, this little clicks? I didn't know BL Twitter existed until a couple years ago. And I'm glad I'm here. Hey, how y'all doing? Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. But yes, one of the good things is that I found friends. Honestly, to me, lifelong friends. I ain't even met them yet, but I just feel like I have some really good friends. BL highlights the LGBTQIA plus community. Me growing up, I didn't see a lot of that in media. Like when was the last time you saw like a gay character in media before like BL became a big thing? 
few and far in between, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the issue. That's the issue. We don't have a lot of people in media, good examples of, you know, people of the community to look up to in the media. So I'm glad now, like the new generation that's coming up, they have these stories and they have a, a whole array of stories that they can choose from to seek guidance in their journey of self-discovery. But me, when I was younger, oh no. It was het central, heterosexual central all around. But yeah, it puts a spotlight on the community and it normalizes our love. I know a lot of people have mixed issues, like mixed feelings about the fact that BL is kind of separated as BL and it to its own genre, which honestly I wholeheartedly agree with. I feel like the boys love genre should be like dismantled altogether and just tell the stories. Just tell the stories. It doesn't have to be a whole genre, but I understand to get somewhere for us to get to that normalization. Some people might not agree with this, but we kind of have to separate ourselves in order to be normalized. Does that make sense? Like, think about it. Like, let's think about the Black Lives Matter movement or the movement in the LGBTQIA plus community or the current movement going on in the Asian community. In order for things to be normalized and things to move forward, sometimes you do have to separate that issue into its own like category. Not for it to take away from anything else, but for it to stand on its own and be highlighted. You know what I'm saying? So I understand creating the genre BL, but now I think it's time for us to just dismantle. Guess what? These stories are normal and they're gonna be listed under all of the regular categories like romance, sci-fi, suspense, um, rom-com, you get what I'm saying? Are you, are you following me? Are you getting what I'm saying? That, that, that. And with that, it shows the majority that we can love, we can have normal relationships, we can have normal lives. That's it, normal, period. That's it. And it also creates work for the LGBTQIA plus community. Now, there's a lot of work to be done with creating work for the community, but I have two stances on this on people of the community playing LGBTQIA plus characters. I understand that we should hire more people to play those characters. Fully agree, fully on board. But I think part of the issue is when a lot of people call out people not being a part of the community and playing certain characters, but we don't remember that we only know these people through a screen. And for all we know, they could be part of the community, you know what I'm saying? but we just don't know, you know? Because not everybody is ready to be out and proud, you know? And I understand playing a character in a series or a movie, it would be the best, you know, if we had someone that was out and proud and just living their life, playing these characters. Love it, amazing, innovative, amazing, crazy, amazing, wow, amazing. But we have to remember that not everybody is willing to be out like that just yet because they might be in a compromising position. We have to also think that, you know, okay, me as a gay man, I didn't come out until my sophomore year of high school. To some people, that's really early. I didn't get beat. I didn't get harassed or anything for coming out to my family. Thank God. I did get the microaggressions, trust me, because my family, my family is very traditional, um, but I didn't get all of that. But I can't go around saying, come out, like be out in the open, you know, if like I did it, you know, do you, do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying a lot of words, don't know if they're coming to a point for you guys, I hope so but you get what i'm saying it's like not everybody that plays these characters are out it would be great because it would create an another role model for the young gabies and and lebbies <laughs> lebbies and and trans and queer and all the babies of the community to look up to but we have to remember that they are also a part of the community and not all of them are in a safe place to you know be out there because the industry is very much still not as accepting as you might think, especially to people that aren't in the industry. It's easy to say a lot of things. It's easy to say a lot of things. That's why it's, it's good to look at things 
diplomatically because it's easy to say whatever you want on the internet behind a picture that's not you it's easy to have a really big opinion but when you're actually in it it's i think it's different so those are the good parts of bl highlights the lgbt plus community in media normalizes our love puts a spotlight on us so that people can learn more shows the majority that we can have love too and creates work for the community as well now let's talk about the bad of the community are y'all ready for that all right so the bad <laughs> Of the BL community. Let's let's start let's start with fetishization. There is a line. There's a line between fetishization and appreciation. Okay. Now let's look up the definition for fetishization. Some of the jokes and stuff that I see on Twitter um, are wow. Granted, everyone, I don't care who you are, fetishizes at some degree. There are levels. Of it but when it comes to a point where it is literally diminishing a person's image that's where it becomes a problem I mean hey I have my little thirsty moments on Twitter I have them all the time it's okay to be like oh my god like this person is so fine oh my god like I really want to date this person oh my god like I am in love amazing this person is so sexy this person is so fine oh my god like i love their pecs i love their legs i love their ass even that in my opinion in my opinion is fine because you're appreciating the different like parts of them especially if they worked hard for it now when it comes to you specifically outlining the acts that you want to do with this person the things that you would sacrifice for this person, things like that, then that that's that's a little that's a little that's a little that's a little wow. And again, I am no saint because I'm pretty sure there are some tweets out there where I have like fetishized somebody. But there comes a limit. There comes a limit. There's a limit to appreciation and fetishization. Romanticization of different very problematic things in the BL community. Let's take rape. Let's take Harassment. Let's take um, toxic relationships. The oh my god, you like literally beat my beat my butt, beat my tail. Um, but because you did that, I'm gonna fall in love with you type of thing. You know? Um, the I did something to you without your consent, but <laughs> I guess I love you now type of thing. You know that that I think we all know who I'm talking about romanticization of very problematic situations is not it's not it's not good because then it sets a image in people's mind of what the community is about and that's what what we're about it's okay to explore your sexual fantasies in these series it's okay to you know be sexual and stuff like that don't let anybody ever tell you that sex in a series is bad because it's not it's not the only thing that makes a series matter of fact series can can be great without sex let, let's just put that there but it's not unwanted at least in my book stan culture stan culture <laughs> wow stan culture now let's talk about stan culture how many times can i say stan culture stan culture stan culture stan culture do you know like stan you know do any of you know where the word stan comes from stalker fan yeah i hope y'all knew that if you didn't well the more you know um stalker fan so stan culture is probably the most problematic thing that i've ever seen granted there are two sides to it stan culture stan the word stan has been over time kind of diminished as far as like oh my god like a stalker fan like now people just say stan and they just say like i stand something like i really really like it i really love this like oh my god this is so great like that um but stan culture itself is still very very bad <laughs> in my opinion because i will see someone literally bash another actor actress idol but then when their faves do it it's like uh, like people make mistakes and they mess up and they do this and do that that's why i hate cancel culture people do this and do that and like it's okay like 
hold them accountable, but don't go too hard on them. But like last week, baby, you were going in on this person, ready to cancel them. And they did the exact same thing that your fave did. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so stand culture, that type of stand culture. That's why like in my, in my bubble, bubble of BL, that's why I want to create a bubble where we're all hyper aware that not everybody is as good as you think they are. Narratives. Okay, let's talk about narratives, the bad ones. Now, this goes back to the romanticization of certain things in the BL culture, but narratives. There are a lot of narratives in BL. And one of the big ones is that it's okay to make the community look bad through your series. To push certain narratives that are very far and widespread in our community, it doesn't happen often. Um, I'm not going into a lot of details in this because I, like I said, I don't want to make this a long video, but if you want more details about my thoughts on each one of these points that I'm pointing out in this video, then leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys want. Let me know what you guys would watch because I want to produce more original content for you guys. But if you ain't gonna watch it, what's the point? You know, it's like I'm talking to nobody. I mean, I am because I'm like talking to a camera right now, but like when I post it, then I'm talking to you, you know? Well, that's gonna be it for the good and the bad of BL. Like I say, guys, if you want more videos like this, or if you want a part two, and if you want me to go into detail about some of the things I talked about in this video today, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, do all those things. There's four things that's gonna take you four seconds, maybe five or six to do. It don't hurt nobody, it don't cost nothing. So, you know, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, hit that like, comment, and share button. And let's get this ball rolling, you know? But thank you guys for watching this video. I love you all, even the ones I don't know yet. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.